chat GPT that can write code, good code, chat GPT that can pass graduation exams at most universities. you got to understand how do you optimize your LinkedIn to end up in recruiting because recruiters are using AI too. Do you see any good segments where people are hiring? Companies really have to um, start thinking about it. My name is Sveta Regni. I am founder and CEO at Teach Hindu, and I'm a certified career strategist and resume strategist. I used to hire a lot of people, meaning I came from the hiring background, more than a decade of hiring background, and then I got laid off. <laughs> so in one minute over the phone, then it was really hard for me to bounce back because, you know, when you're in the same environment for years, you don't know what's out there, the, what's trending outside. And it was extremely difficult. And when you go through so many roles and together, you feel like you can do it all. I don't know if you feel that too. Then I had that self-doubt moment, the clarity. I bounced back and then I quit within a year. And then I decided, you know what, I was doing this as a side hustle, not charging people. Then I said, you know what, I'm going to go and launch this fully out there because there are some gaps in hiring system. Let me go ahead and fix it. And here I am today. It's absolutely wonderful to meet you, Sveta. A wave of layoffs just came about in technology companies. In A week after that, a wonderful news of chat GPT came out. Chat GPT that can write code, good code. Chat GPT that can pass graduation exams at most universities. What's going on? It's super helpful to understand the world of AI. Whoever made it, it's a great tool. I have used it. I was fascinated by it. I was kind of like addicted, to be honest, just to find out what it could do, right? So for resume writing, a lot of people are saying, are the resume writers going to be out of job? I don't normally write the resume. I teach how to write the resume. So when I started just giving them, feeding the information, it just gave me, it's like, ah, it's not outstanding resume. You know, I would not hire someone if they gave me the resume like that. I think any AI they need the clear directions. Whoever's feeding the information, they really have to be knowledgeable to get the output. That's my opinion, right? So if you don't know what you're doing, ChatGPT is going to just split out whatever they want to based on their memories or whatever they're pulling the data from, information from. But you got to be the smart one to navigate around that ChatGPT or any AI tool to get the best result. In my theory, I only got the result that I wanted when I knew what I wanted to feed in from the job descriptions, right? As a hiring manager, what would I look for? I gave them the word, okay, plug this, plug this, now give me this, write like this, right? You still have to initiate that. And if you're not training the person, whoever is typing that information, the coding is going to be down the drain. So mass layoffs, economy is uh, slowing down, technology is suffering what other segments do you see suffering right now as far as employment is concerned besides technology? Do you see any good segments where people are hiring? What can you tell us about that? Absolutely. So let's go with the things that it's moving away from the workforce. Talking about the AI, right? Have you been to Walmart lately? Like, you know, literally those... The, those um, industries all the customer service are gone you have a self-checkout machines now people are getting used to not seeing people anymore so i feel like those things customer service roles more kind of like entry-level roles are moving towards the ai and um, that's sad because now where are they going to go and uh, transfer those skills, right? So they have to pivot. So these are the people on the entry level are easily replaceable now from what I've seen. And then I think when it comes to what's coming up in the pipeline, meaning what would be the trending thing would be still the technology. We cannot live without it. We've lived in the world where look how far we've come, right? From like the bigger phone to like smaller one. Now we're moving towards it's back and forth. So I think technology is not going to die. It's just a matter of upgrading your skills to the skills that you want to upgrade it into that market. 
if you've never upgraded it 10 years back, it's not going to be the same. You've got to adapt to the market. And AI is huge. It's a billion dollar industry. People are funding left and right. And if you want to go back to the tech industry, gone are those days where you've never upgraded it. You've got to understand the different market. And that's where I think people are going to be ahead of the game only if they try to understand the AI tech it's coming up in the pilot pipeline. Yes, I agree. Where shall people start training for what kind of profession? So you've mentioned learning AI in order to use the technology. You're not suggesting them to start building AI. Not everyone is capable of doing <laughs> that, but at least uh, understanding how AI works. Uh, that's one area. Where else can people go and what other, for example, factories? Are factories coming back to the United States from China? What do you see? I don't know. Um, is it? Because us, as um, I come from Canada, and then we, we love to op- outsource because obviously the taxes are high here. And um, outsourcing has been really good for the companies, but are they coming back? Are they willing to pay that, even the minimum wage, right? Um, But then it's half of it wherever they're paying out there. So I think the companies really have to um, start thinking about it. And as an individual, let's go back to the job seekers. As career professionals, I feel that you got to be visible, you got to build a brand. And how you do that is knowing what's out there on social media, right? So for example, if you're not on, let's say, LinkedIn, why are you not? Because a lot of recruiters are looking for people like you. You got to understand how do you optimize your LinkedIn to end up in recruiting because recruiters are using AI too, right? So you got to understand the backend system before you start pointing the fingers, hey, it's not working for me, there's a hiring biases. What are you going to do differently from 10 years? Because it's not going to be knocking on someone's door and then dropping the resume, right? So you got to understand that. And then I think where I see, I don't know if you've seen the trend is social media marketing is huge. Like if I have to hire someone, I could literally hire more than 10 people just for social media, right? Getting a lead, separate people, the expert business development, someone else, posting things on Facebook and LinkedIn. So you cannot be subject matter expert on all social media. They're like TikTok media expert there, Facebook media expert there, how do you build a brand on LinkedIn? So there are things that you can hone in only if you want to, right? So these things are not going to go away. It's going to be another platform probably coming up. Competition is going to be coming up, right? These are the things you can leverage because you can learn for yourself as well. How do you brand yourself as a job seeker? Plus, you would learn the different marketing tactics that it's not going to be working anymore from 10 years before, right? So I don't see any flyers at home. I don't even look at it. It's all online. So you got to make sure what's trending online. Absolutely. Online is the thing. So... We have a layoff crisis right now. How long do you think it's going to last? I wish I know, like I'm not an economist or something like that. But I think um, the layoff, I truly believe that happened because um, the top organizations who were making billions of dollars started to being greedy, right? It's, oh, we're moving from different platform to online. People are just buying. We cannot keep up with it, which is great. But it was at the cost of people who actually had a hope and dream and they wanted to work with these biggest employer because there was a high paycheck and whatever it is, good benefit. And then they left everything just to be with them. They trusted them as a family. And this is no longer the environment where people are going to be trusting employers as, hey, we're a family, right? So I think this is why people need to review these top employers because they do have a skeleton, right? They can pick you from here one minute and drop you the next day in one minute as well, right? So you've got to be always looking out for yourself. Being loyal is fine, but don't be that loyal that you become um, you become someone that you don't know who you are after titles. Just make sure you go and continue to upgrade your skills and then ready to go out there. Make sure you have everything ready to go if the layoff comes in for you. And uh, look at those water cooler talk. Listen to it and try to find out that if the layoffs are happening, you know, what are you, what are you going to do about it? Don't wait for them to give you that severance unless you want to. So I think the layoffs are happening. 
because of the fact that companies are getting away with it. CEO can just literally say, I messed up. But then you know what? He's not the one who's taking pay cut, right? Mm. Um, I messed up. I It's fully, I'm accountable for it. But then what are you going to do about it, right? So next time when people want to work with these top employers, they're going to think twice. Do I really want to work with these companies who are uh, laying me off over email after working there for 10 and 20 years, right? So people have seen the bad side of employer. And I truly believe that employer branding starts on how do you exit the staff? And that's your branding. So I don't think a lot of people would want to go back to the same employer. Are you saying that it is only layoffs in large companies? You don't see a lot of layoffs in medium-sized companies? That's a really good question. You know what? I have no doubt there are a lot of small companies, small businesses. They are laying off people as well. But look what's happening. A lot of these um, top companies are in media because it's a mass layoff. There's a legality and compliance issue. They have to announce it. Noted, you know, when they are laying off certain group of people, right, certain quotas, they have to follow that compliance guideline. So that's why I'm, I, we're seeing it more. But I think... Bigger company can get away with it because they have a huge chunk of severance and people are like, hey, we'll give you this. Look at what's happening with the people who are on H-1B visa in U.S., right? People from Canada are, in bad, are you know, impacted too because they have the TN visa going in states and settling. Now they have to move back to Canada. But what about those immigrants who came in, gave up everything back home? Now they are going to be starting from scratch. They have only 60 days to move out or turn that into the status that they never wanted to be. They have to go back and be a student in F1 status, right? So this impacts so much, especially with the people of color, you know, the immigrants who move to the different country in the hope of something. Now they have to go back and there's no coming back because immigration process is really tedious as well. How do you think layoffs impacting consumer behavior, right? Those people that are being laid off, uh, do they think they're going to go consume more, consume less? Would you start buying new computer equipment after you've been laid off? No, but here's the thing, right? Um, I was laid off and, you know, I had a work computer. I had a work BlackBerry, (laughs) so I had no choice to go and buy it. So I think it all depends on where they are at their career as well. So um, the necessity thing you have to buy no matter what I want you to buy because that's how you're going to go and get the job out there that you want, right? There are things that you must buy after layoff. But obviously, when it comes to spending, the first thing they're going to look at is a bigger chunk, right? Let's If you have a mortgage, are you going to go and call the bank and say, if you can skip the payment, you can defer the payment. So if you have two cars, maybe freeze one car for insurance purpose, whatever it is, right? There are things that you could do personally to save it, but not that much because this is where the rainy day um, saving comes in. So you have to probably have more than three months of savings. But the job market, depending on the targeted role, is in how old are you? Where are you? Um, and it does matter with the POC as well, people of color as well. It's it's hard. There's a biases and discrimination as well. So you're not looking at three months to bounce back, right? You are probably looking at more than that. So um, and taking bridge job, survival job at the same time is not a problem. But don't get stuck with it. You got you got a bills to pay. So I remember my husband got laid off from top 50 in US and states. And luckily, we had a PR in Canada. That's where we moved in one single car finance car, right? So it impacts the life. And we had to think about it. Okay, how do we go about save it? And then we both worked in factory in the same factory. He was IT graduate in US, right? So we got to do what we got to do as a family. And I think uh, when the things like that happens in life, um, as a family, this is where the family comes in together, right? So in one hand, we call employer a family, but they lay you off in one minute. This is your real family when that happens. Guess who's going to be around? Your family is going to be the first biggest support for you. Shweta, thank you very much. Is there anything else you would like to say to our consumers before we part? You know what? Thank you for having me today. And uh, I know the market condition is not looking that great. But you know what? At the end of the day, uh, life happens to all of us. This is not the first time that has happened to all of us. And you got to go and see what's best for you. If you want to pivot, probably this is the time for you to pivot maybe and look into the career change or maybe start your own business if you've got something because we all have some strength within ourselves and see. And sometimes um, there is probably blessing in disguise happening and we don't even know and that's what happened to me.